what's up everybody welcome uh so today we're gonna do kind of a different type of video uh, i just wanted to just do a shout out and welcome everybody uh, i think this week we've surpassed in the facebook group 25,000 new members so i just want to cordially invite everyone uh really just take a moment to celebrate the growth of the vegas nerve uh tribe all around the world and uh, it's pretty exciting uh, and, uh, yeah, just kind of give some resources for people to start, right? This is, maybe this is the first time you're looking into the vagus nerve. Maybe this is the, the fifth year you're looking into the vagus nerve. Whenever it is, I just want to just do a bit of a quick orientation, if that's cool for everybody, um, for everybody watching. Hey, good. Thanks, TK. Yes, yes, yes. A long time coming. 25,000 members. Whew. And again, here's the here's the thing. Never had a goal for anything like that. I just started the Facebook group, started posting to it, and uh, turned out it was a, a topic that people were interested in. So here we are. Um, but yeah, today I want to go through just some quick starting um, information for people that are just here, just joined, uh, and uh, get, them, get them off to the right foot. Now, before we always do a live video every day at five o'clock Pacific time and eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same time every day, same place here in the Facebook group. Um, I we do always do something that's kind of a little Vegas nerve booster for the video, which is a um, a little quick breathing exercise. So all we do is we take a big deep breath in, like a like that. You take an extra sip of air at the top. And then you're going to hold it and you're going to kind of squeeze that air in. You're going to like, like that for five seconds. So breathe in. And then you're going to exhale slowly. And you should feel a little different when you do it. Maybe a little bit of coolness in your fingertips, a little bit of a tingling. You definitely might feel dizzy. So if that's happening, then congratulations. You just stimulated your vagus nerve. How easy. Now, uh, we call that the simultaneous squeeze. Um, so, uh, so where to get started? Well, first thing is, who am I? My name is Sterling Cooley, Sterling Cooley, and I have been doing vagus nerve work for about, well, over six years now. And I've been working in biomedical technology and research for 12 years. Uh, the vagus nerve journey came to me later in my career. My first, my first love has always been the brain, and I started back in my twenties when I worked when I lived in Berkeley, California, and I was going to college, and actually developing technology that could stimulate the brain. My applications were always neuroscience based, so I started developing because of one of my academic advisors. We started looking into the effects of ultrasound, literally from a from a a large ultrasound machine that you'd find in a hospital. We used a hospital grade machine. Those cost about a quarter of a million dollars. So it became one of my jobs to reverse engineer, re-engineer, and shrink and lower the price of these large cart-based ultrasound systems so that we could do what we really needed to, which is to stimulate the brain with ultrasound. That started about 12 years ago. And uh, halfway through that, one of my academic partners actually was like, we were kind of playing around with ultrasound one year. We had already raised a lot of venture capital funding. I had been to, sent to China to go develop the technology um, on a mass scale. We already sold many units. We did a lot of research on humans. I think we had at that point studied ultrasound brain stimulation on at least 10,000 people uh, by 2017. And it was in 2017 that I was on a trip to Napa Valley, California for kind of a business slash pleasure trip with a bunch of friends and colleagues in the in the field. One of my academic advisor was there, another close associate of mine in ultrasound was there. And uh, he, he threw out this idea. He said, well, we've got this ultrasound system, the one that I developed here with us in the in the home in Napa Valley. Why don't we try? I don't know what got under his 
what got into his head that day, but he said, why don't we try stimulating the vagus nerve? I was like, huh, I've never really thought of it like that. Because we've already been stimulating through the brain and getting really good effects. But he said, I want to try, what if we put ultrasound right up to the ear and we stimulated right here in the concha, the simba concha, and the vagus nerve does run into your ear right up here, right here on both sides. So both ears, it works. You're, ve you're very much a mirror image of both sides with the vagus nerve. It's on the left side and the right side, almost equally so right down the middle of your body, just so you know. And I said, okay. So I turned on the machine, plugged my laptop into it, programmed a couple frequencies to scan through on the ultrasound. And then um, I went first. So I put ultrasound gel on it. I held the transducer right up to, I believe it was my left ear right here. And I could hear the ultrasound going zzz, 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 and it was putting out ultrasound frequencies. And uh, I was like, huh. And it kind of felt like a little tickly, like a little tiny little something there. I was like, hmm, that's weird. So I really didn't know what to expect. It was not an area that I was familiar with stimulating with ultrasound. We were always stimulating through the brain, through the top of the head, through the back of the head, right through the brain, but not the ear. Just didn't really come up. And so I said, hmm, okay, here, you try. So I handed it to him. He tried it. He said that stimulating the vagus nerve in the ear with this ultrasound probe, the one that I developed in China, um, it made it, it was a like a tickling feeling. And I was like, huh, okay, that's kind of interesting. And then we had a third uh, partner there, um, uh, Betsy, and uh, she was a, a, a professor at a college nearby, um, dating my academic advisor at the time. And... Uh, you know, beautiful, radiant, amazing, lovely woman. Um, and so we're like, here, you try. So we handed it to her. We put the gel on the tip and then she holds it up. It's still putting out the ultrasound. She puts it right up to her ear and she goes, oh, wow. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, wow, that feels really good. And, and and I remember my friend and I, we looked at each other like, what the hell? What the hell's going on? And so we're watching her and she's having like quite a time. You know, the, the two the two guys here in the in the group here were like, that kind of tickles. And she's like, oh my gosh. It was like a, a scene from when Harry met Sally, basically. And I was like, what? what the hell is going on here? I don't, I don't, this just was like way over my head. I was like, how could we get that from stimulating the vagus nerve in the ear? How is that possible with ultrasound? It just was not something we had looked at for the last six years. And so we literally had a lunch date. So I was like, okay. I was like, Betsy, we got it. Like, we got to go. We got lunch with like Deepak Chopra, like five minutes away. Come on, like, let's go. I wasn't like that interested in pursuing the question anymore. I was just like, okay, that was interesting. It again, that just tells you a lot about my where my brain was at. Like that was a that was an effect we were just not looking for, and it was there clearly in front of our eyes, and I just missed it. So that was in 2017. Uh, no, no, 2016 was when that happened. Actually, so 2016 was the, that happened. It didn't take me until six months later in 2017 to even return to ever stimulating the vagus nerve again. That's admittedly how much we just kind of overlooked it. It was kind of like, huh, interesting that something that profound could happen within a few seconds of stimulating the vagus nerve with ultrasound. It just, I don't know. Nothing came of it. Does that make sense, you guys? All the, I'm, I know we have a large female audience. Does that make sense? Do guys typically are like, do guys can, am I the only one that's oblivious to this kind of stuff? Women, I, I feel like if we had had a, a, a female academic there who knew something about this, she would have been like, uh, hello, this is like major. This could be like a kind of a big deal. It was both of us nerdy engineer research academic types who were like, 
I'm hungry. <laughs> so I don't know. Would this be something that as, as a female, would this be something you would have been like, would you have raised your hand and said, um, yes, there's something here? Because still, it took us, again, six more months to even circle back to that question of the vagus nerve. It wasn't immediately obvious. Is that something that you, 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 you gals would have noticed? Or is that, would you also have been like, hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I know, right? I feel like it's pretty typical male behavior <laughs> that we would have seen that and just been like, I'm hungry. Let's go. Um, so yeah, it's, it was very typical. Uh, it's embarrassing to think about it now, but it's kind of comical how it all happened. It, it, it happened at the right time. It was, it was synergistic and amazing that it happened. And I'll never forget that story. Um, so it still took us about six more months after that to return back to the question of what, what is it about the vagus nerve that responds so well to ultrasound? And I was naturally the one who was the one to investigate it. That's why I'm the one running the Facebook group here now. Um, so I returned to the question of how how is it possible that ultrasound can stimulate the vagus nerve so well? If it could stimulate Betsy's vagus nerve so well through her ear, what if I did some more time with it? So I tried, you know, that was only a minute. That was 60 seconds <gasps> tops with this ultrasound uh, system that I developed. And that system, I think we sold it for about, you know, probably $10,000, you know, that system on the market, it'd be about $20,000 if you're not academic. So we, you know, that's not, I'm not selling that device or anything like that. But I returned to that question again. And I said, well, what about me? Okay. What, where is the vagus nerve? So I learned it's runs all the way through your neck. The neck is the most common target for the vagus nerve. So I thought, okay, well, I'll place this ultrasound. I use this transducer uh, that's about the size of a poker chip, and I placed it right here on my neck, right here. And then I went, and I did, actually did the Wim Hof breathing exercises, and I went, put the ultrasound on, and I just went... <sighs> all while stimulating the vagus nerve at the same time. And then in Wim Hof, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to exhale for like, you're exhaling all the way, taking all the air out of your lungs for the most part, and then holding the air out. Just whew, no air in my lungs right now, except for the little bit left over to speak. But my lungs are pretty empty. And then I'm still stimulating and I'm holding. And then my brain starts going, okay, you need to breathe. You really need to take a deep breath right now. You, no, I'm serious. You really need to breathe. And then I go, okay, I'm going to take a breath in now. So you take the biggest deep breath in, you go. And you hold that. And then you squeeze with your diaphragm and you go. And you like kind of like pull in your stomach and you pull your chest and you like, like you're doing like a like a uh, like an exercise move <gasps> but in this case i had my ultrasound right on my neck and so i'm doing this and this is normally this kind of breathing is a pretty intense practice i was like fuck it i'm gonna do it all anyway and what happened was that rather than having the typical nice flood of endorphin experience I basically my vision turned completely white I was literally felt like I was in a white room, like the kind of white light you see when you're dying. And then the white light went, and then I saw myself in Central Park in New York City in the middle of a green, beautiful park, like literally in Central Park in New York City, broad daylight, mid middle of summer, uh, you know, mothers pushing their strollers with their babies around the sidewalk and people playing soccer and people throwing frisbees and taxis honking in the background and horses clip clap clopping around the, the streets and carriages all over the city. I mean, Lily, the most hyper realistic imaginatory vision of Central Park, which I've been to 
a couple of times in my life, but I don't typically spend a lot of time there. I'm mostly a West Coast guy. I don't spend a lot of time in New York City, but I became like almost astrally transported. What seemed like a full hyper-realistic hallucination of Central Park. And then I was just, there was no thinking. There was just purely, purely experiencing this, this thing. I wasn't going, wow, where am I? It was just like, not even like a holy shit, what's going on? It was just, holy, just, just there, pure experience. This, this seems to have lasted for something on the order of, I don't know, five minutes. It felt like I was there for about five minutes. There was no such thing as time. There was just like literally the as present moment as you can get. Time was not a thing. Thought was not a thing. It was just the being there, the experiencing of it. It was like as, a, as if I was like the, the spirit of Central Park in a sense with a single point of eyes where I was seeing it from, but no me. I wasn't there. It was just, I was there. It was weird. And then five minutes passed, and then I guess my time was up, so I got sucked back into the white room, and then sucked back in my body, and I go, and I wake up, and I have my ultrasound still, uh, and I'm going, uh, uh, like this, like, where am I? Oh my god. The, what the hell? And I was like seeing, okay, now I'm back in my room again. I was actually, I have a nice carpeted space here in my office and I was laying down on the ground. I, you, you know, you couldn't have done that while standing up or by sitting down in a chair, you would have passed the hell out. So if you ever do something like that, always lay down with your head supported. Luckily I was already on the ground, but I would have fallen like a bag of potatoes if I was trying to stand up and do this at the same time. Don't ever mix those two, okay? So I came to, I woke up, and I was like, what the heck was that? And I, for a minute, thought, did I just, like, die or something? I felt It literally did feel like I had almost killed myself somehow. But I got to tell you, I felt more alive than ever in many, in recent years. That year in 2017 was just kind of boring a little bit, right? Nothing, nothing was really happening a lot. I was just kind of in like build mode. I was doing engineering and just life wasn't like amazing, I guess. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um... And within a few months of that, I uh, I made my move down to California again and moved down to Silicon Valley. And I had like some of the most remarkable experiences. Um, there was something about that, ex that transitory experience of stimulating the vagus nerve and doing Wim Hof breathing together that did something really deeply personal, spiritual, transformative, releasing, whatever you might call it. If anything, this was like, uh, it's funny, right? Because I, now you know, right? This, this was the reason why I take the vagus nerve very seriously, because clearly I did something to it. it. I unleashed something about the vagus nerve that I had no idea was even possible. There was never, nobody... Not even people who do psychedelics have ever relayed to me a story that comes anywhere close to that kind of a shh and shh back to somewhere else and back like that. That's that fast, that intense. And then once you're back, you basically recover almost instantly. There's no drug feeling to it at all other than yeah, your consciousness is literally out of your body. If somebody were observing me, if I had invited someone to watch me, which I wouldn't have done because I probably would have been like, well, actually, technically speaking, it probably would have been better to have someone there with me uh, to observe me in case something went wrong. Like if I started choking on my own spit or something like that, because that could have happened. That definitely could have killed me. 
uh, as I've realized now. But since I was young and in my 20s and very healthy, I really didn't have much to worry about. I figured, hey, if this kills me, then I was pretty weak to begin with, and I don't deserve to uh, to pass on my uh, my my jeans or whatever, you know, donate my Levi jeans to anybody else. So I figured, what's the risk, right? If if I find something that's interesting, then uh, then that's interesting. So. Yeah, that was why this all happened. But uh, uh, so, yeah. And then here we are, basically. So that was in 2017. And I started the Facebook group about end of 2018. Um, We ran a research study on this. We've been doing this stuff ever since. Yeah, that's actually, Sarah, you're, you're spot on. A brain scan would have probably been very, very interesting now, we actually do have a brain scan machine down in Encinitas, California. And now that I think of it, I would love to replicate what I experienced with that. I almost... So it's weird. Part of me suspects that if I were scanning my brain, I don't know if I'm right, but this literally felt like an, a pure out of body experience, I would either see that my brain was lit on fire and I was having a full blown hallucinatory experience in my own mind, like kind of what happens when you die. This this was as vivid as you could possibly imagine. Nothing was muted, right? Most people who do drugs to be able to get to that stage are imbibing chemicals which shut down parts of their memory and parts of their brain. So they're, they're drugged. This is a purely sober version of that only breathing air and stimulating the vagus nerve with ultrasound. And, uh, I don't know. On one hand, I suspect maybe my brain would have shown hardly any activity because maybe my consciousness went and floated around somewhere else in reality and then floated back. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, I don't even know what to think. I I, I really don't know. But you're right, Sarah, that's a great idea. Um, You know, Sarah, if if I have any say in the matter, I'll do my best to make that brain scan happen. And the good news is, is that that's not a unique experience to just me. It's not the only time I've done it. If I wanted to grab my ultrasound and lay in bed right here, I have a little office bed here and a little cot and like a floor. If I just wanted to lay down and demonstrate to you right here on camera, I could do it. I could, I have my ultrasound, I have tons of ultrasounds around my house. Um, I could, I could replicate that right now and show you exactly how I've done it. Um, So yeah, I, I, I won't. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to do that publicly. But uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah. If I have any say in it, I will. I will hook my brain up to a brain scanner and uh, do the experiment. And then I'll also bring uh, a couple of other people, and we'll we'll scan their brain when they do it too. I'll walk them through the process, and we'll stimulate their vagus nerve in exactly the same way, uh, and see what happens. Um, and I've replicated that exact thing. And other people have had these incredible, deeply transformative experiences from that practice, exactly. I'm talking like, this is, you'll often see me not take things like when people say, it's going to be a reset of your vagus nerve, or we're going to release all that all that anxiety and stress from your vagus nerve. I'm like, you guys can't even come close to what I've experienced. You think I can take, the, the, it's like, It's like, so, it seems so weak. It's so watered down when I hear people saying, we're going to reset your vagus nerve, girl. I'm like, compared to what that was, that was like a spiritual cleansing experience. It was like squeegeeing my third eye. It woke me up to a massive dimension of the vagus nerve. Like, you guys think I was not led here on some cosmic pathway that I had to experience that in order to even take the vagus nerve seriously, given what I had already literally seen. This took me waking up to another level of reality 
to be able to say that the vagus nerve is there. And it's continually been a journey of basically getting on the internet every single day and saying, hey guys, don't forget the vagus nerve. I'm telling you, there's something about your vagus nerve that's really freaking important and you should probably take it very seriously. And you know what the funny thing is, is when I do travel to New York, when I do travel down to California, guess what the top, guess what the smartest neuroscientists are working on right now? Vagus nerve stimulation. So completely independently of each other, there are some of the most intelligent, forward-thinking doctors, neuroscience, academics, and researchers are all converging on the importance of the vagus nerve in regulating inflammation, regulating mental health, living a healthy life, all of that. And I didn't coordinate with them. They didn't coordinate with me. We had our own personal experiences. Different people woke up, essentially, at different places in the world at different times. And now we're converging here on this thing called the internet, and we're raising the collective consciousness about this thing. So it's it's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, short of someone, again, for me, it was this personal experience. For, for you, it might be tuning into a YouTube video, uh, joining a program, reading a book, learning something from this Facebook group, uh, trying breathing, trying the, uh, Nem- the Nemuri pendant uh, that's coming out soon. Have you guys seen that, by the way? We released, we're released. we releasing next week a uh, wearable uh, pendant that you actually hold up to your mouth and you breathe out into. <sighs> and it slows your breathing down. It's really cool. So it, it, it activates your vagus nerve by breath. And it's this beautiful gold-plated pendant that you wear on your neck. It's it's a work of art. On one side is the Japanese kanji for namuri, and which stands for peacefulness, or you know the process of relaxation of, of inducing sleep, so you can calm down, which is parasympathetic activation. And then the other side is the the Vegas Hub logo, which is basically a V with a human inside with all hands up, like yes, like this. And then it says live with systems, right on the right on that other side of that pendant. It's a fantastic reminder. It's a beautiful piece of work. And uh, yeah, we'll be posting about it next week when it's officially up for for sale. Um, But yeah, if you're looking for some cool ass jewelry to sport, um, that's going to be it. I'm going to be wearing it every video. So I'm so excited. We've, We've been literally engineering it for the last probably two months going back and forth on reversion revisions and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, anyway, so as a getting started video, uh, here are some recommendations for you. Uh, definitely get into the Facebook group. So Vegas, Vegas nerve stimulation and repair is the Facebook group that we operate from. Uh, if you look at the welcome post, there's a micro lesson index. Let's see here. I think I have it. Here we go. I'm going to post here in the chat. It's also in the Facebook group. This is a PD. This is an Excel spreadsheet that you open up and it's going to have the top rated posts from all the years that we've been operating. Uh, I'm still adding to that weekly. Um, I just started it a few weeks ago just because people were asking, but all the best links in the Facebook group all in one place in that index. And you can always click on that and find videos, resources, guides, Red Ball, uh, nutritional supplemental advice, um, how to stimulate your vagus nerve through breath. Um, there's so much in that document. That's all one single place with a single sentence to describe what the thing is about. So you shouldn't have any issues finding what you're looking for. And it's in an independent document off of Facebook, so anybody can open it. Now, here's the thing. The, uh, the information in that inbox, in that index, the Sterling Cooley Micro Lesson Index, all is publicly available. However, the links go back to content from within our Facebook group. So if you, forever, for whatever reason, decide that you want to leave the Facebook group, or if you post obnoxious content in the Facebook group, or uh, you talk back to people, you're disrespectful, and you get removed from the Facebook group, that index isn't going to be useful at all because you will have no more access to the content. So 
be nice, be helpful, be respectful. I'm sure nobody here is a spam person, but we have had some people posting spam. This happens in every Facebook group. So if that's you, just know that you will be, you will lose access to all of the content uh, in the Facebook group if you get removed uh, and that document basically won't work for you anymore. So that's a, that's a good way to kind of keep your behavior, keep your behavior good, be good and we'll be good to you. Um, so that's honestly the best place to start. Now for the question of what device should I buy? Don't buy a device. You guys, I never started with devices. I started with learning how to breathe first. I learned how to do cold water exposure first. I learned how to eat properly, how to meditate, how to, how to do, uh, systems planning, health systems planning, looking at my life, designing my relationship with my family, my, 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 my spiritual connection to God before I ever looked at a vagus nerve stimulator device. Um, and so I think you can optimize for a lot before you have to go for a device. So whereas there might be other groups on here that are like, buy this, buy that. They're, you're never going to have any confidence in what you actually purchased um, if you're in groups like that. Um, you know, they're just trying to, you know, they're just trying to like make a quick buck, right? All the other Facebook groups that, that you're in, they're selling you some $200 device that they're going to make 30 bucks on and they really don't give a shit about your condition. Um, I care about the people in here a lot and I make, I want to make sure they make the right decision. So we do offer free consultations over the phone for people. We also have a five day challenge that's completely free coming up in two weeks from now. Uh, that will be a fantastic video series that'll happen earlier in the day, about six hours earlier than this. So middle of the day for five days, starting on Wednesday on October 11th. And we'll run from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're going to learn every technique possible for vagus nerve health from eating, from neck strengthening, from uh, what we can do with ultrasound. You're going to learn every single thing that there is to do. Uh, so the five day challenge is going to be basically the best way to learn this stuff. Um, and that's going to be presented live and hosted by me. So I look forward to seeing you guys uh, on that. Um, but other than that, I encourage you to ask questions in the Facebook group. If you have a question, uh, I don't require uh, approval for posts in the Facebook group. I just ask that you don't put, we had some, we did have a, a member who I had to remove uh, some three or four weeks ago. She was posting something about 13 questions per day in the Facebook in the span of about two to three hour windows every day in a row. I looked at her account. I was like, Oh my God. She's like, are you sure that if I, if, if I have a hard time breathing, then is my vagus nerve not working? And then she would ask the same question again, like give us time to respond to the first question. I mean, I swear to God, she literally would post 10 to 13 of the same types of the same question. Again, I was like, okay, clearly this isn't a good fit we're not designed to take on this level of a, of a, uh, of a support case. Um, but there are other places we did, we did recommend, uh, another place for her. And I think she is getting help, but the group is not, not compatible with that level of like neediness. So, you know, let's be adults here. This is not emergency care. If you have an emergency situation, go to emergency room. If you have a really pressing, serious medical issue, go maybe speak to your doctor, but the typical answer people get when it comes to asking about their vagus nerve is, yeah, you've got a vagus nerve and no, I don't really know much about it to, to be able to help you. So sorry. Um, so as much as I want to say, go talk to your doctor about the vagus nerve. That's the unfortunate thing is they don't know a lot about it. So you're probably going to actually have to answer, ask the question here in the Facebook group. And I'll typically try to answer every single question posted in the Facebook group. Um, also there's no anonymous posting allowed. I just like people to post on their name. It's all private. It's a private group. Nobody else is in here, uh, that you don't want in here. So it's good. Uh, it's very, it's a very small, intimate family of people that post. So anyway, uh, but yeah, other than that, keep your head on your shoulders. Don't lose your way. And, uh, you know, just be cool. Just be cool. That honestly, best advice I could give guys here, guys and gals, is just be cool, be calm, 
we'll get to you. We'll help you out. Um, and the people who are more proactive get help way faster. Um, if you're waiting for me, I'll, you know, I'm going to be trying to be better about at proactively reaching out to people and sending them a private message and saying, you know, Hey, so is there anything that you need? But, um, there's 25,000 people. Um, if you're comfortable waiting around for that to happen, that's okay. Uh, but you can always send me a personal message. I have an account. You know where to find me. It's a lot easier for you to send a message to me than it is for me to read your mind and send a message to you. So please message me um, and I'll try to get back to you. So, uh, all right. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, so appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, let's congrats to all the people who've been here for for any amount of time, whether you got in here today, maybe you got in here uh, five years ago, who knows, however long you've been here, I want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart. We've got 25,000 uh, beautiful, awesome, sexy, smart, intelligent, game-changing folks from all over the world in this Facebook group, and I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, I'm only I'm only one out of that 25,000 person group, so uh, I really do appreciate everybody uh, for joining. So, um, so yeah, let's go, let's go team, let's go Vegas nerve. All right, well have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna hop off. Um, thank you, woohoo, yay! You're the best, TK and Sarah and everybody else for joining. Thanks guys, thanks Jada, thanks Shar, thanks Lori. Uh, good to see you guys. Um, but yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow. We'll be back on tomorrow. And I actually think I get to meet some of my clients. We're, we have a meet, uh, we actually have a, a in-person meetup, I think scheduled in Seattle for tomorrow. So I'll actually be able to meet people that have been clients of mine for years in Seattle. So that could be kind of fun. So wish me luck there. They're always good people. Um, awesome. As always, thanks for being there. You're welcome. Um, super stoked. All right, guys, take care. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy your weekend coming up. All right. Take care, everybody. See you soon and peace. Bye-bye.